All right, continue with our little limit quiz. And we have these two questions on the spot. As always, you should pause the video and try these two questions first before you continue watching my solutions. Okay, so I trust you guys, you guys know work this out. And now you are gonna check your answers with mine. First one right here, the limit as x approaching one of this, and you guessed it. If you're putting one into all the x right here, you will end up with zero over zero. Therefore, you have to do more work for this. And the truth is on the top, we can actually factor that out. You don't have to do long division or synthetic division. Factoring is good enough because if you look at x to the fourth power plus 2x squared minus 3, this right here is actually in the quadratic form. This is not a quadratic expression because the degree right here is 4. But if you do this right here, let me show you. This is called the tic tac toe factoring. Well, what times 4 will give you x to the fourth power? Of course, we can use x squared and x squared. And what times 4 will give you negative 3? Well, I will be using positive 3 and negative 1. Why? Because now I will have to take this right here, multiply with this, which is negative x squared, and then 3 times x squared, that will give me 3x squared. When you combine the terms in the middle, that's why you see, huh, we also end up with the positive 2x squared. So we know this is factorable in this fashion. That's why I use the x squared and x squared right here. All right, so what does this mean? Let me just write this down. x to the fourth power plus 2x squared minus 3. This right here is equal to, you read this from left to right across for the answer part. You get x squared plus 3 times x squared minus 1. You look at this from left to right when you are putting down the answer. You do the cross multiplication like this when you're checking to see if you did the right combinations or not. So this is the factoring. And notice right here, we can do more. So we will do more. This right here, we cannot factor anymore in real numbers. So I'll just keep it as x squared plus 3. And this right here, we end up x minus 1 times x plus 1. It's just the difference of two squares. So this right here, you end up with the limit as x approaching 1. On the top, of course, we will just put this right here for that. So we have this, namely x squared plus 3 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. And for the bottom, of course, we have this little innocent x minus 1. And yes, you know, ah, we can sort this out nicely. And then putting the 1 into the rest of the x's. And let's see. When we do that, we get 1 squared plus 3 times 1 plus 1. And we'll just do the computation in our head. This is 4 times 2. Altogether, we get 8. So that's it. Do not put on infinity for that. It's the other way. All right, anyway. Now, the limit as x approaching to infinity. Inverse tangent of x over x plus 2. If you put infinity right here and here, you get infinity over infinity, right? You have to do this one legitimately. So what we do is actually the following. First of all, inverse tangent is a continuous function. So what you're actually doing is you can just look at the limit of the inside first and then take the inverse tangent of the result. So in notation, I'll write it down like this. We are looking at the inverse tangent of, we take the limit of this part first, inside out, right? So we look at the limit as x approaching infinity, and this is x over x plus 2, like this. Well, this is actually not that bad because if x is approaching infinity when you have a rational function like this, all you care is the highest power on the top of x and then the highest power of x on the bottom. x and x pretty much. The plus 2 doesn't really matter. Just think about it. If x is approaching infinity, just like the amount of money that Jeff Bezos has, if you give him two more dollars, he doesn't even care. If you give me two dollars, I will say thank you, right? Anyway, so you pretty much just care this and that, and they do have the same degree, x to the first power over x to the first power. So when you reduce, you just get a nice one. So this is the quick and dirty way to do this. 
In another word, you end up with the inverse tangent of 1. And you also have to know inverse tangent of 1 is equal to what? That means you have to ask yourself, tangent of what angle will give you 1? Well, let me just draw a little picture for you guys because I said this is for my uh, Calc 1 students and maybe some of you guys haven't done math. Maybe you guys have too much fun during your winter break. So you are asking yourself tangent of what will give you 1? Tangent of 45 degrees will give you 1. Why? Because you have to know your special right triangle. When you have 45 degrees, the upper side is 1, the adjacent is also 1. So tangent 1 over 1, right? That means inverse tangent of 1 is this angle, 45 degrees. But we are all adults now in calculus. Do not write down 45 degrees. We put down pi over 4. We use radians for the answer. So, that's it.